Oh, me hearties! A very good morning to you. Tis me, Scotty McClue, first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and, of course, the world's most humble man. So, excellent. Lovely to have you with us this morning. Friday morning. Well, nothing is past me. The last one of the week. I can't believe it. The last one of a wonderful week. I hope you've enjoyed these pop-ups. I hope they've taken a thorn out of the crown and that uh, lockdown doesn't appear appear quite so bad. I hope that we've found a little silver lining when a cloud appears in the blue. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you with us and a very, very good morning. Now, who have we got here? Because this is going to be a biggie. Gordon Robertson, you were on first. Good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us and Dinky too. And uh, We've got uh, Kareem has joined us as well. Good morning, Kareem. Margaret Sheldon. Morning, Scotty. How are you today? And a kiss. Mwah. Fantastic, Margaret. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Friday pop-up. And uh, Larry Donaldson is watching. Tremendous stuff. Susan Forrest is watching in Lancashire. Fabulous. Jack is watching down in Gurukh. Finley's watching Dinky Do Finley. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, tried to be the first, but got beaten again. Margaret Sheldon, you will never get beaten. You are a top lady. So there we are. Lovely to have you with us. Gordon Roberts is laughing his head off here. It's fantastic. Now, guys, I'm just going to, I know it's early doors, but I'm just going to share right away because I'm finding that you distract me. I get distracted. And um, if that happens, we forget to share share. If we forget to share, nobody knows we're on. And um, it's just tiny figures that has to build. I mean, yesterday, there was a good few hundred of you. Fantastic. That's what it's about, because we are early, especially during lockdown. I suspect there will be the odd slothful type that will sit up late, having a large refreshment, and then won't be able to wake up in the morning. So there you are. So we need to try and encourage the slothful types to get out their bobos. Fantastic. That's what it's all about. Right. I'm just going to um, share this one right now, and then we can get down to business because I want to know what's happening. Stephen Mooney, Dinky Do, lovely to have you with us, and a warm, warm welcome. Friday, last one of the week. Well, I won't see you all till Monday, but there we are. But uh, that'll give you a break for starters, I can tell you. Now, here we are here. This is what it's all about. Right, uh, I'm just going to share to the Big Scotty McClue page. That's the 6,000 one. 6,000 lovely people who have liked that page. I think we're about 10 short, actually, of the 6,000 at the moment. So if you're feeling... Generous. Um, oh, talking of generous, thank you to everyone who put something into uh, Scotty McClue's PayPal. That was very, 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 very kind of you. Thank you very much for that. So there we are. PayPal.me forward slash Scotty McClue. Um, hi, from Glen Rothes is Martin Byrne. Lovely to have you with us, Martin. Good morning from the uh, town of the roundabout. Uh, Kareem says, I had a nice walk with the dogs yesterday in Rookin Glen Park. I think I'll do the same again today after your show, of course. Oh, of course. Nobody goes out during the show. Oh, oh sacrilege, sacrilege. David Dustin, dinky do. Good morning, Scotty, dinky do. Um, I hope you have a happy Friday. I hope you do as well, Stephen Winnie. Predictive text. There we are. What have you been texting? Derek Walker, dinky do, dinky do, Scotty. Yes, absolutely. Lovely to have you with us, Derek. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Right, the big share's going now. And uh, I'll just put live now. Get this on. Yes, I'll put uh, congratulations. Congratulations, uh, live now. 
There we are. Congratulations live now. And I'll just send that out. And that will go on to the Scotty McClue big page and let everybody know. If you can all share, guys, um, and type in somebody's name that you know is on Facebook, get them up and watching as well. Because as I say, you can have the finest show in the world. And arguably, this is. Because I've never seen anything, I'll not say it myself, on commercial television or radio or anything like that to touch the Scotty McClue pop-ups on Facebook. There we are. John Marshall is watching. Lovely to have you with us, John. And Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo Scotty, says Susan. Dinky Doo Susan. Mwah. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome to our Friday pop-up. Incredible stuff. Uh, uh, up every morning at 10 o'clock sharp during the weekdays and 8 p.m. on a Sunday evening. So when you're sitting at home on Sunday evening, you go, what did I hear that I had to do at 8 p.m.? <gasps> Scotty McClure on Facebook Live. Yes, get it on. Uh, the Scotland top I've got on, says Derek Walker. Ah, there we are. I wondered if it was a hoop top, a hooped top if you get what I mean <laughs> or if they uh, happen to lose it would be come on the whoops <laughs> there we go uh, wonderful stuff and um, now then um, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 uh, Wendy Walker says hello says Derek tell her hello from me Derek fantastic stuff spread the word Scotty I've had a lovely walk down New Lanark yesterday have you been Yes, Finlay, I'm a great fan of the Robert Owen and New Lanark. And I had a friend actually used to stay in one of the houses in New Lanark. But um, he said that sometimes uh, on certain days, you get quite a lot of fumes coming up from the buses and things like that. A lovely, lovely house in New Lanark, Robert Owen, and a wonderful educationist as well. So there you are, well worth a look. I was sitting in the tea room, the cafe at New Lanark one Sunday morning, reading the Sunday Post, when I learned that I had been proposed as the rector of Stirling University. So there we are, alongside the author Ian Banks and His Royal Highness the Prince Edward. So there you are, never a dull moment. McClue's not just an athlete, you know. John Marshall, Aaron Foy, Marcella Foy, Paul Hunter, Marty Innes, Thomas Peden is giving you a three-line whip. Up yous get! I'll not tell yous again! Uh, Molly Scott, I hope you're well. Ian Reid, very well. Better to see you. I have to be honest. I will fess up to that. Uh, more sharing, guys. More sharing. Can't believe we have to share some more. And I'll share to uh, my story. Share to your story. Does anybody really get that big style? If you can tell me about sharing to your story, that would be lovely. There's lots of things we can exchange on here. I did a pop-up on YouTube Live, and um, very, very interesting. It was late on a Saturday night. We are just doing some experimentation about uh, live streaming. And uh, I popped up on YouTube, and it was great. It was all mature people, and a lot of them were guys, and a lot of them wanted to talk about cars. You know, so uh, we we're just discussing what to call it. And somebody came up with the title, Gear Knobs. Thought that was quite good. I thought Top Clutch, but that does need a bit of work, doesn't it? Top Clutch. Welcome to Top Clutch. There we go. Wonderful. Uh, what have we got here? Get up. No excuse to miss this essential lockdown viewing, says Thomas Peden. Thomas Peden, I agree with you, sir. Yes, essential viewing. It should be compulsory. So there we are. You have to watch Scotty McClue. No, that'd be too unfair on people, wouldn't it? <laughs> Did you see Scotty McClue today? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be watching it later. Yes, officer. <laughs> officer. Uh, should supermarkets, again, be 24 hours to space out the customers throughout the day? A lot of people don't sleep, and it could help reduce the crowds during the day. Well, what we need to have is Scotty McClure's Nightline 
live on the radio, and then the people will go to sleep. You see, it's interesting, Kareem, this 24 hours a day society. When I was a wee boy, <laughs> when I was a wee boy, everything stopped. People, here's how your day started. I would get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. My father used to come in and say, come on, it's 7 o'clock. And I thought, so what's happened? And he would bring the dog to wake me up. The dog at that time was a West Highland White Terrier who would leap on the bed. And my dad would also um, give wee kicks to the bed uh, to say, oh, what's going on here? So I would pretend I was asleep. I would go, asleep, go away. And all that. And he'd been up at five digging his garden. And he started work at eight officially. So he went to, uh, you know, put all the, the workforce out and everything. So that was him. So he'd gone <coughs> by uh, about quarter to eight in the morning anyway. And then I would get ready for school now. Your mother came down and made you a breakfast. So you got the full bit. And then... Um, we had a break at school and you got a third of a pint of milk, which Thatcher, the milk snatcher, took off us. So you got a third of a pint of milk. And then um, there was lunchtime. Now, lunchtime as a working person, if you were in a, a blue or white collar job, you went to a cafe or a little restaurant um, and you had lunch. And your lawyers and your doctors and all that went to luncheon in the smoke room and things like that. And then they sat and talked and puffed on pipes for about 20 minutes after. So there was an hour for lunch. Now, the shops shut, including the banks, which was, of course, the time that you actually needed them. So that, that, so there was no lunchtime opening. The shops then all shut at 5 o'clock. Everybody was gone, Right. Uh, you know, and the paper shop may be shut at six because they'd been in the go since five in the morning, four or five in the morning. Now, after that, about half seven, eight o'clock, you saw the polis, the polis, the police going about trying doors and shops to see they were all locked. So that was that. So by seven o'clock, Everybody's in. You, you maybe played a wee bit of football outside. If you're a football person, put your jackets down and what have you. And then everybody was in by 8, 9 o'clock. And you got maybe a wee doorstepper of a tomato sandwich or something. And then bobos. So everybody was in their bed by 10. That's how people learned to sleep because they were shattered. They'd put in a day and they'd eaten three meals. So, you know, that was kind of how society was. And um, and it was kind of just the way it was, really, till the 1960s. And then people started coming in with late night opening and what have you. What you could get at night up until 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock was an off license. So there you are. When people used to sneak out hoping they wouldn't get seen and buy a couple of bottles of beer. That kind of idea. You know, so you got things like that. And the cafe was open till uh, 9, 10 o'clock. So you could, you know, go to the cafe and have a wee uh, cup of coffee and put the jukebox on. But in general, folk were in their bed at 10 o'clock. That's how they slept. The wains, the tiny wains, were away to bed by 7 you know, we once sneaked down and hid and watched Z cars from behind the couch. <laughs> Actually, probably mum and dad knew we were there. It's quite funny. We sneaked down and watched Z cars. And I think it went out about seven or half past. Chris Clark's watching. Good morning, Chris. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. Morning, Algin. Chris for Carlisle here. Oh, for Carlisle. Well, you're a canny gadgie, you. I'll tell you that. And um, are you going along the Warwick Road? There we go. Okay, Charver. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Stephen Menzies, Dinky Doo. Holly Anders is watching. Reese Jack Hamilton. Free Gliska, he says. Lovely to have you with us. Derek Walker. I got in the supermarket in with the carer's letter and have a look after the wife. 
So there, to, so there we are, to look after the wife. Excellent stuff, Derek. Thomas Peden says, dinky-doo, from Marty Innes to Thomas Peden. Brett did swell. The warm milk in the morning at school was a recipe for disaster. I remember the wee kids vomiting it up every morning. Yes, been there, but that's because I'd had two because somebody didn't want theirs. So there we go. And our milk was not warm. The reason I would uh, reproduce it, if I may say, in case somebody's having a late plate of wheat bang, was um, because it was freezing cold. They left it out in the winter and it was bitterly cold. And you had to, um, you press down the silver top and you could get a straw, a paper straw, note, and you tried to bash a wee bit of ice on the top of it with your straw because the jelly had left it out in an aluminium milk crate for third of a pint. So there we are. Yes, no consideration for lactose intolerance. No expiry date on the milk bottles. Well, you see, the government line, this is where your politicians are very clever, the government line was that we'd had rickets in Glasgow in the west of Scotland, and that's how you get your wee bow-legged soles, because their bones hadn't formed properly. They hadn't had enough calcium. And there was calcium in the milk. So, <laughs> so you got your calcium. So the government were being the good guys and saying, you know, give the weans calcium so they don't get the rickets. The truth underlying that, that was true as well, but the truth underlying it was the farmers were saying, look, there's so much milk just going down the sewer. Uh, and they went, well, Get to the wings then at the school, and then it's at least it's getting used. A dinky do, Scotty, top of the morning to you, says the wonderful Nikki Graham. Top of the morning to you, Nikki. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. Can everybody share, please? I want to see that figure there over 100 by the end of today's program. And that is up to you. Okay, so come on, guys, get to it. Andy McMillan is watching. Thank you, dear Andy. Lovely to have you with us with your beetle, your beetle for your logo. Um, Lloyd Duff is watching us in Australia. Oh, Lloyd, it's time for that. It's time for the hat. Lloyd's watching in Australia. It's time for the hat. The hat. There we are. Off with the bunny, on with the jackaroo. Now I am talking to you and saying, dinky do, good day. Fair dinkum, fair dinkum, Lloyd. Lovely to have you with us, Cobber. So there you go. Uh, Craig McHugh's watching Michael Farker. Michael Farker, get up. Thomas Speedon commands it. Wow, you sure know how to work a suit with your bonnet, Scotty. But then again, us Scots have always been the best looking. We sure have. I'll tell you that, Cobber. Right, here we go. Fair dinkum. Whoa. I want some pantomime. I can do a quick change. Connor Cassidy, get up. Thomas Peden commands it. Noggins Ritchie, did you ever get the belt at school, Scotty? Yes, I did. But I was never a naughty child. I got it for talking and for laughing and for getting a sum wrong. And I'll tell you about the sum in a minute. And um, as you can see, it's cured me. So I don't talk and laugh now. <sighs> so there we go. So that was good, wasn't it? That worked well. Uh, so they are, no, the belt was a nightmare. I'd, I'd thoroughly, thoroughly disapproved of the whole thing. And all this chat. And if you got something wrong in religious studies, um, you know, who was who was the wife of Donosa? Out! Yeah, there we go. Oh, terrible. I'll just attend to you now. Oh, and, and, and they had the belt up the sleeve, up the jacket. They whip it down. And, Go on, get your hands up. There we are. So yes is the answer. I did get the belt at school, but... I'll tell you an interesting story, and this was just very, very poor teaching at the time, I have to say. Very poor primary school teaching at the time, I have to say. And um, we got this, oh, she was an absolute tartar of a teacher. And um, all my sums were wrong. I got zero out of ten. Every sum was wrong. Now, I'm very, very good mathematically and arithmetically and geometrically as well. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so that was me. So uh, anyway, my mother said, how are you getting these wrong? I said, well, look, I'm adding them up and doing the teacher talk. I was left-handed, and I was starting adding up from the left towards the right. My mother then added the sums up from the left to the right, and every single one of them was right. So I thank God for my mother. And the beatings stopped. There we are. Uh, and we shall all we had half day closing on a Wednesday. Yes! One day a week, all the Scottish towns had half day. Usually it was a Wednesday. Was there ever a Tuesday or a Thursday, I wonder? But it was mainly a Wednesday, so midweek half closing. So someone would say, right, I'm just going to nip down to the shop. They'll be shut. It's Wednesday. It's half day. Oh, so it is. Oh, well, I'll go tomorrow. I was just going to get chops anyway. So there we are. <laughs> we'll fry something else up. Scotch morning rolls in the morning. Oh, now you're talking. We had a wonderful, wonderful company in Greenock called Olds the Bakers. There you are. And they were tremendous. Olds rolls. Gorgeous. Don't stop. I can... Oh, I can taste them yet. They were beautiful. So there we are. Wonderful, wonderful rolls. Uh, Kareem says, Scotty McClure, technology is changing. We can do so many interesting things. What do you see the future holds with technology? Any examples? Yes. <coughs> they did a survey. Pardon me. Don't worry about the cough. Had it for 20 years. Too much talking. Too much talking and laughing during lockdown. They did a survey, Karim, and they found out what sort of jobs could be replaced by technology. And very high up the list was waiters and waitressing, because they could see a situation that you go into a place, into McClue's eating house, and there are sort of machines and things there. And you can type in what you're having and pay, and then uh, you can pick it up. So there you are. So, you know, you go to the hatch or, or whatever, or they might have it, hot soups. I don't know. But anyway, that was one of them. The one that came furthest down the list, there was only 4% of replacing teachers. And all the parents in lockdown will understand this, right, who have been doing the homeschooling over the last six weeks or so. Very difficult to replace teachers because the classes need to be practitioner-led and they need to um, have the, the reaction and the interaction and all the rest of it and the behavior sorted out, what have you, for the best way to build their learning and their knowledge and understanding. So teachers, very far down the list are being replaced with technology, but... I think there are huge opportunities during the lockdown for tremendous communication here with technology. So, pardon me, I do see that going that way. Uh, hi, Noggins, is Margaret Sheldon. Carmack McCaskill's watching Dinky Do. My dad had Ricketts Scotty. Yes, Margaret, he would the wee soul. Um, because when I say wee soul, you know, because it made people shorter and their legs bowed out. And it was quite difficult for them to walk. You know, it was, it was an awful thing. Um, you know, I know we've got this coronavirus and it is deadly and dreadful. But when you look back, diphtheria, uh, polio, um, going further back, bubonic plague, the Black Death, tuberculosis, phthisis. Is that, am I pronouncing that right? Maybe a doctor will help me. Phthisis. Um, you know, these sort of things. Cholera, typhoid, an outbreak of cholera or typhoid in a town. When I worked at Red Rose Radio, it was based in a wonderful old church, which was a, a peninsula church. Money from the Napoleonic Wars had built the church in about, it was 1818. I was talking to my old boss about this last week on the phone. And um, it was a wonderful conversion for the radio station, uh, for this church, you know, like 170 years later. And, uh, and a brilliant place to work. 
But when I came out at night at um, one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning, there were all the graves in the graveyard and a mass grave. And I'm very sensitive to spirits and things. And a mass grave for victims of cholera in um, 1848 in Preston, when Charles Dickens would probably be writing hard times in Preston. So there we are. Uh, hi, Victorian. Uh, hello, Margaret. So we'll be able to talk about the good old days. No rickets here in Australia. Just warm milk that went off in the hot weather. Have you ever pushed it with the milk a wee bit, Lloyd? Have you ever sort of gone, oh, no, that's not Lloyd. Sorry. That's Brett. Sorry, Brett. Just your, your, your name disappeared in the shadow there. Um, yes, no rickets in Australia. Warm milk that went off in the hot weather. Brett Tinswell in Oz. Um, did you ever push it a wee bit, though, with the milk? The... Oh, it's all right. You put it in your coffee and it sort of floats about. Uh, lives in farm fresh milk. Lovely, says Derek Walker. Derek, a very interesting way of talking. Dave Anders is watching. Good morning, Dave. Welcome. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us, sir. Uh, Derek Walker, uh, yes, lived on a farm fresh milk. <clears throat> yes, it's got that slightly um, warm, bubbly colour, and it smells of grass. Shared to my timeline and four of my groups. Nikki Graham, I bless you. Thank you. In fact, everybody, let's have a share. Let's have a share. On we go. Scotty pops up and we say, hello. I just made that up there. It maybe needs a bit of work. Um, I'm sharing to another page. I'm going to share to another page, guys. You can all do the same. And if you've got a big page, what this pop-up needs is somebody massive to just share it with everybody and it goes round. That's what's involved. Uh, we used to get the yardstick at school every Friday afternoon, only the boys. The logic was we'd done something wrong that we hadn't been caught doing. <laughs> Pret, it's well bless you. Mark Fim is watching. What a top man. One of our finest broadcasters. Good morning, Mark. Lovely to have you with us. Um, on the hand, me. Ouch, says Derek. <sighs> ah, yes. Brothers William Henry is watching. Good morning, Your Grace. Oh, my Lord. My Lord, is it? Uh, what's your title, William? Glad you could join, Bert. Absolutely, Margaret. Laughing as well. Yes, oh, I got it for laughing, didn't we? Um, can we get a shout out for Connor Kelly, who's getting his tag off today? Uh, so there we are. Yes, absolutely. So there we are. Is it a skin tag? Is it one of these wee tags that, you know, that sort of idea? Um, you know, wonderful stuff. I'm away to break the law, says John Marshall. <gasps> Don't ever break the law, John Marshall. But uh, if you're going out for exercise, then once a day. I still remember the wee things my primary one teacher told the class. Gordon Robertson, yes. Our primary two teacher made us cress sandwiches. And I was telling somebody the story as we grew our own cress in the class. And we had tadpoles. And we, one was changing into a frog just before the holidays. I never knew what became of the tadpoles. It's not a beetle, Scotty. It's a warrior ant, a tribute to the late, great Keith Flint of the prodigy. Andy McMillan, I stand corrected, la. Welcome to the warrior ant and uh, requiem scat in patche for Keith Flint of the prodigy. Good for you, Andy, because I was thinking... Has anybody ever been to a beetle drive? Do you remember they were fashionable at some point? And what it consisted of, you went along, it was usually a wee fundraiser for your church or your youth group or something. And it was a beetle drive. And um, the card had all the bits of a beetle on it and with numbers. And somebody was to shout out the numbers, so you had a beetle collar who shouted out the numbers, and you put it down, and when you joined all the bits up, you shouted, Beetle! So I suppose it was a kind of um, non-gambling bingo. Fantastic. And they would check it. Beetle called. Can you check that, John, that he's got? Yeah. 
It's got all the legs and yeah, top, bottom, good. Yeah, beats all, excellent, good, right. Uh, you can have something from the prize thing. And I can remember there was a sugar shortage. Can't remember when it was. Maybe about 1970 or something like that. And it was a sugar shortage. And um, somebody won two pound of sugar. And he was up holding it up and waving it and never going, oh, yeah, jammy, so it's so. <laughs> uh, Bamba Myers, I lived a short time in New Lanark during the winter of 62 stroke, 63, exceptionally cold, had a single room halfway along the middle row. Folk used to raise families in these tiny rooms. I what at, says Bamba. Uh... Hasty's the Bakers on Bannatyne Street, and it was quite a job to get to work at 5 a.m. Quite a lonely existence living down there at that winter as a 16-year-old bairn. Can I send you strength, love, warmth, joy to say you clever, clever man, you brave, clever, courageous man. A 16-year-old boy away from home living in a single room in a wee, quiet, old-fashioned village. Well done, you. So there you go. These are the things we should be thanking people for, guys. These are the things that lots of us have done. And we kind of thought nothing of it, but later you think, Whew. and it was tough going. And I can remember paying, I think it was four pounds a week for rent. You know, I can remember that. Mind you, that's no bad. I wouldn't mind going back to that. Darren Jackson's watching Fraser Macduff. Adam Spibby Higson. Dinky Deuce Spibby Higson. Graham says, Scott McClure is still going to be on Sunday night at 8 p.m. GWWP, Kareem. God willing, weather permitting, I will be popping up to speak to you all to address the world at 8 p.m. on Sunday evening. So there you are. So make it a date. Get it in your diaries, guys. Salvador Mendoza Lozano. I have insomnia. The 4.25 a.m. here in Mexico. But it's nice to know you. And good morning. See, si. Good morning. Buongiorno. And um, I have insomnia. 4.25 in Mexico. Yes. Am I saying that right, Salvador? Salvador Mendoza Lozana. Yes. And Mexico is watching us in Mexico. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My dear Cousin, my brother from Mexico. Never been to Mexico in my life, but nice knowing you. Good morning. Scotty, can we shout out to Kane Spar? He's a piano playing phenomenon, says Finlay Morris. Yes. And have you all checked up um, Scotty McClue teaching piano? All right, I'll teach you the piano in seven minutes. Now, it's up on Facebook. Scroll back, see if you can catch it. If you can't catch it, I'm only getting to terms with all the selective stuff that goes in the news feed. So I was under the illusion and the impression that everybody could see Scotty McClure on Facebook Live, but no, they can't all see Scotty McClure. So all the Facebookers can't, only the chosen few. There we are. Uh, Scotty, wonderful stuff. Gordon Stirling is watching. I should think so. My friend used to make gunning faces at me at school and made you laugh. I know it. We had one that used to do this. He turned round when the teacher asked you a question. He McClure, what's one and one? And this guy turned round and I'd do that and make you laugh. And the teacher would go, nothing funny about that, out. Uh, wrong, out. Uh, all that sort of stuff. That was another thing, the belt in the winter. Oh, don't. Kieran Davenport, it's a skin tag. Connor's getting off. So there you are, absolutely. A weak skin tag, they just grow something. I've got a couple. Um, and one, one's grown under my arm. It's a wee bit of skin that just drops down. 
So there we are. Uh, I think so. It's congealed his leg. Yes, yes. We skin tag. That's it. Be careful with that, though. You don't want it getting infected. Uh, Kieran Davenport's. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So there we go. I remember my primary five supply teacher. He was horrible and racist. He would point his finger hard on my shoulder, embarrass me in front of the class, made me cry. My mother complained and the head teacher gave me into trouble. That would not happen nowadays. No, it would not. And I'll tell you a, a, a story. The late, great Jimmy Shand with his wonderful accordion playing, his primary teacher beat him so badly that his mother went down to the school, demanded to see the teacher, and said if he ever did it again, she'd set him on fire. One angry mum. And I mean, that would be very brave of a lady, you know, a roadman's wife, to go down to the school at all because people had a tough time at the school. That's how you sometimes used to see parents thinking, oh no, dreading parents' night. You know, now the schools, it's a wonderful relationship that they have by and large with the parents and the young people. Dinky do, Scotty, on this glorious Friday morning, Michael Farker. I could not agree more. Lovely, lovely to have you, have you with us. Susan McLean's watching. Jerry McLaren's watching. Good morning to the legend. Dinky do, my good man. Jerry McLaren, good morning to the legend. Your good self. Always lovely to have you with us. What a top man. Morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Russell Robertson. Good morning, Russell. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. Um, loved when my dad worked on the overnight paper trains. He brought in well-fired rolls fresh from the bakery. Oh, Stephen Menzies. Now, the trains and the boats, Stephen Menzies, they were big on food. I've had dinner on the train once. Uh, it, I had to save up. It cost me a fortune. I think it was seven quid. And it was tomato soup. Some of my favourite fare, tomato soup. Oh, no, we started, I think, with a prawn cocktail. Tomato soup, fish and chips, and um, I think there was something like, you know, apple crumble or apple tart and custard, apple tart and cream to finish. And the guys on the trains, the catering guys, all wore, um, you know, you thought it was a gathering of royalty. You'd have thought it was a gathering of royalty. Excuse me a second. <laughs> thought it was a wee gathering of royalty. Sorry, excuse me a wee second here. What's going on? Right, just give me a wee minute and I'll be back in a second. Don't you go away. There we are. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll tell you what happened. I was, when I was talking, I noticed I'd got a wee shaving cut just on the side of my face there. And uh, I thought, that's not very nice for the, the people to look at. So I do apologize. Um, don't remember doing it right enough. Uh, yes, so they looked like a gathering of royalty when you saw the catering staff on the trains because they had, like, Tailed coats, red tailed coats, I think. Um, you know, so they all looked like the captain of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club. Fantastic, really swished up and dinner on the train and it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I remember getting what was called the motor rail, Stephen Menzies. Now, I don't know if you'll remember the motor rail. And you drove to Stirling in your mini and drove it on to, they took it away, they took it away off you, you just gave them the keys and you went on the train. And then that train went to Newton Abbott in Cornwall. You could go to Newton Abbott in Cornwall and you drove off and you were in Cornwall. You went around Cornwall. 
fantastic, the motor rail. And the guy for breakfast in the motor rail went in. It was all these um, slidey doors, these uh, compartments. And he was going up and down shouting, and I can remember it to this day because uh, we're laughing about it. Good morning, breakfast being served, sausage, bacon, egg, or the fish. Uh, tea, toast, jam, and preserves, seven and six, the lot. No wanting it? No? Okay, thank you very much. Sliding another door. Good morning, breakfast being served now, tea, toast, jam, and preserves, sausage, bacon, egg, or the fish, and... Uh, Seven and six, the lot. It was fantastic. And it went on like that. Tremendous stuff. Also, the boats made exquisite toast because they're a very hot grill and they popped it in quick. So there you are. So that's what was going on there. Um, I'm cutting Agnes's hair on Sunday evening, including all her unwanted hair. Right? I've asked her to retain some of the facial hair as we're trying for a baby during the Sunday pop-up. Gordon Sterling, too much information, but thank you. You can never have too much information, really. Uh, and good luck, by the way. I, I wish you and Agnes all the best, you know. What she doesn't have a hairy fit. So there are. I was talking to an old friend online in Dumbarton last night, and we remembered the smell in the high street of Ballantyne's Brewing the Whiskey. Also, when you went home for dinner from school, when Dumbarton, or oh, so when Dumbuck Quarry Dynamite went off at 1 p.m., it was time to get back to school by the one o'clock gun for Dumbarton. Now, Dumbuck Quarry, was that the great big quarry that you passed? It would be, yes, half the hillside had gone uh, up behind the petrol station. Is that right? Craig Party is watching, Dinky Doo, Scott Grant, Michael Farkar. Hope you have your Factor 50 looked out today, Scotty. Don't want to look like a jar of beetroot. Absolutely. I'll have a face like a bag of worms. There are Michael Farkar. Do not remember people used to come into their work in Scotland as soon as the sun came out. Everybody just went out to their wee back greens. And even all your bought, not your bought houses, your council houses, had a wee bit of shared ground that you could lie out. It was fantastic. It was quite good. Moss Park was your place for that. Superb gardens. Uh, I had a teacher used to hit me in the head with a dictionary book. I you know. That's maybe what's done it, Derek Walker. Yes, absolutely. I hope not. Billy Hunter, Dinky Doo. Scotty, did you hear about Trump's crazy idea of injecting disinfectant into humans for treatment? Yay, I didn't hear that one, Jack, but that is a crazy, crazy idea. Yeah, absolutely. You see, if you disinfect and kill off all the bacteria, then we can't live. We exist on bacteria, you know? I can always remember a friend. I hope nobody's at a late plate of wheat bangs, but I can remember a friend uh, telling me, that his septic tank, he stayed away out in the country and they had a septic tank, so I sort of soak away for all the shecht. And um, his septic tank had stopped working and the shecht was piling up. And he said uh, to one of the locals, do you know who would come and do my septic tank for me? And he says, well, what's wrong with it? And he said, oh, it's piling up. It's, ah, it's maybe stopped working. You need to throw something, didn't it? And he found a wee roadkill rabbit and stuck it in the septic tank. The septic tank started working again. Now, don't all try that at home. Do you know what I mean? That was for entertainment purposes only. But interesting, you see. Um, Michael Farker, I'm away for a line. Yes, we always used to do that. A wee shopping line to take round the shops. So you said, away and get a line. And we did that, and then you took a wee list round the shops. Good, Michael. Good luck with that. But don't forget the rules. No need to apologise, Scotty. Oh, Leslie Brown, that's very, very kind of you. I do apologise because I don't remember doing it. I do, I do. I get up and shave in the dark, you know, but I don't remember doing it. I just spotted that, and I thought, wee souls. But my grandfather used to shave with a cut-throat razor. 
So he went like that. And amazing, and occasionally he would get just a wee cut and he would, he would come down with a wee bit of lavy paper stuck to it. <laughs> so there we go. Scotty McClure, these are very big books behind you. Um, the ones behind me, I think, if I remember, Kareem, are reference books for cross-referencing people. So there's quite a lot of, um, I think we've got... I'll show you. Yes, I think we've got the box peerage and the who's who. Those are several who's who. And a Kelly's handbook of the titled landed and official classes. And that allows me to cross reference because I do a lot of reading of political, famous people what have you, and I have to have all that in my head, because remember, when I started the phone-ins, there was no internet. The internet was around, but nobody had it. You know, the internet, I think, has been around effectively since the 60s, but nobody had it in their house. And you couldn't look stuff up, so you had to have it in your head. Uh, and I very often have to cross-reference stuff. And I think, I'll find out who he was. That's an idea. It's a kind of Scottish thing. Oh, no, I can't. It's feather. Uh, you're always a picture of perfection, Scotty. Oh, fiddly. My goodness me. I'll not be able to get my bonnet on. Uh, Gordon Shand's watching the wonderful Gordon Shand. And Gordon, you are a relative of the late great, my, my absolute idol, Jimmy Shand. Fantastic. So there we are. Gordon is a Shand. John Johns, John Johns. Dinky do, sorry I'm late. I was steaming. So I meant wallpaper. Oh yeah, oh John Jones, it gets a bit hot in there. I remember a friend and I working on a room in a big flat in Glasgow, and we hired a steamer. Uh, not a Clyde steamer, because you could hire a Clyde steamer if there was enough of you. But we hired a steamer for the wallpaper. And you you filled this thing up and then you left it to go well to boil up. It's a great big heavy old thing. And then you slapped it on the walls and it steamed and he was going, <laughs> you know, I said, good, good, don't get the steam up. That's coming off easy now because we've got the steam. Anyway, oh, can we not just open a window? I said, no, you'll cool the place down and the wallpaper will not come off. So we were in there absolutely sweating buckets and steaming off this old paper. Of course, you've got to watch because there's all sorts of sports. When you steam off paper, you very often find other paper behind People have just put it on top and on top for maybe a hundred years. Remember a friend of mine stripped down his cottage and it was all newspaper. So we're reading this newspaper from 1898. You're looking sideways and trying to see stuff like that. You know, it's moments like that. I remember a moment in Steptoe and Son and they'd lifted a carpet and um, Harold says to Albert, um, oh no, Albert says to Harold, I think, well, Gandhi's dead. Now, Gandhi died in 1948. The poor soul was assassinated. You know, but this was the funny line they'd found in the newspaper from 1948. And you, you can't help reading them. I, I promise you. Uh, I do remember the motor rail. My dad took me along with him from Moss End to Carlisle. The Buffy car was the last coach. Oh, it was such a walk. And uh, I remember looking out of the corridor window at all the cars, yes, but you had to watch looking out of the window because you could actually, I remember we got told that somebody had, you know, lost the heat, literally leaning out a train window. Um, and um, Dumbuck Quarry, yes, Scotty, 500 yards past Jackie Stewart's garage. Yes, half the hill was away. Absolutely. Is it still there or has it been filled up? Uh, we had a French teacher who used to chuck blackboard dusters at pupils. I had it, I had it hit the back of my head often when I was turning around talking to guys behind me. I know Gordon Robertson, but your head, particularly your head, all the brilliance and the genius that's going on in there, you don't want a sudden blow to the head at all. Same with the strap, the belt. I'm so much against the concept of it because... People might want to be a concert pianist. And there was a lady I'd heard of. She was elderly, 
and she'd had a pointer across her hands and it had disabled her hand and she wasn't able to play the piano to the standard she would have wanted to play. My goodness me, what's going on? My last meal was on the Royal Train that I walked to Aberdeen with HRH Prince Charles on board, still on my invitation to dine. The chef cooked an amazing three-course lunch. Wonderful. But the toast on RMS Loch Fine at uh, 9.30 in the morning. I don't know if it was duty-free, but you didn't eat till the boat had left. Um, and it's still, I can remember getting the boat from Ballycastle to Campbelltown. And all these beautiful breakfasts were on. And this big bell fast boy goes up and says, Can I get two breakfasts, please? And the young lad says to him, I don't tell him. Sorry, what are you saying to me there? He says, We don't serve until we've left port. You don't serve until you've left port? What, is it duty free or something? All the bacon and the eggs were laid out. Beautiful. As soon as we left port, it got sorted. So there we go. Are there any bakers open, Scotty? I quite fancy a Paris bun. Jerry McLaren, what's everybody's favourite thing out of the bakers? I used to drive the baker's van, so I shall know. You'll not get anything past me. Um, cream cookies. So you baked these ordinary cookies they were, kind of glazed buns, sweet glazed buns. And then I watched the lady baker. She had took scissors and went up the trays, snipping them all. Then she got a piping bag full of cream and scooshed it into all the cookies. And then she um, shook a bit of icing sugar over the whole lot of the tray. Cream cookies. What about a wee honey bun, a wee kind of ginger and honey bun with icing on it? Thruppence, 3D, just over 1P. Happy Friday to you, Scotty McClure. Be thankful we're not all in America, as we would be getting flushed out with disinfectant, then hung out to dry with an ultraviolet internal light. Ultraviolet light would kill off good bacteria, I would think. Uh, so we don't want any of that. We used to get taken shopping as kids. As you walked in, my dad would give my sister and I a bag of crisps and a can of juice, and we'd finish them halfway around. I don't know to this day if he ever paid for them. Peter Connolly, I would almost guarantee he did, because your father would be an honest man, but it wouldn't matter anyway. I didn't know this, but you could put the bag and the can to reception and they could um, to check out and they could scan it. So they were, so I remember a girl eating a bag of crisps. I said, don't, what are you doing? She said, I'll put the bag in it and you can pay. I'm heading to uh, Argus to pick up a horse, Scotty. I'm watching you whilst en route. Somebody else had better be driving, Thomas P. Dunn. So there we are. You only watch Scotty McClure if you feel it's safe to do so and your hands free. Uh, Scotty McClure, time goes so quickly when you're on. Could you play a wee song? I'll say dinky do. have a good week and speak on Sunday night. Can we shout out to Mr. Aki from Liverpool? He's having a tough time with the gyms being closed at the moment. Finlay Morris. Of course we can. Did you ever watch Bethlehem Year Zero on STV after the news around Christmas 1999? It was a modern day inception of the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, presented by Martin Lewis. Yes, very, very good newscaster, Martin. Um, in a newscast format, reporting on the day's building, I did see it. Yes. Uh, on the day's building, day of days, after the birth of Christ. I have it on DVD if you'd like a shot. Thomas, thank you very, very much. I've seen it, loved it. Wonderful stuff. Peter Connolly, it's still quarried. Not a lot off the hill left now. I believe the locals think it's time to call a halt and restore the hillside. I'm sure we had the same in Gurak with a quarry called Drum Shanty, I think it was. 
up Brimbury Drive from the Gurut Roundabout. I think it was Drum Shanty, that quarry, and I'm pretty sure it's filled in now. Maybe somebody from Gurut will let me know. Rhubarb Tarts, and to you, sir. Um, Gordon Robertson, the rhubarb tart. Beautiful. Apple turnover. <sighs> what do we like from the makers, guys? Let's uh, make each other hungry. Margaret Sheldon. Hi, Samantha. Michael Yule's watching. Welcome, Michael. Lovely to have you with us in Dinky Doo. Greetings from Teesside, Scotty. Used to listen to you when I lived in Edinburgh. Esther Pickens. One of my great broadcasting uh, outlets was TFM in Teesside in Middlesbrough. And I used to um, broadcast to uh, all the people of Middlesbrough. And it was great. I was very, very popular. Uh, they did shout and argue a lot, mind you. They were great for an argument, the Teesside people. Jerry McPhillips is watching. What a top man. Jerry McPhillips. Lovely to have you with us. I watched it once a week, sometimes twice. I can't get enough. It's right up there with the Shawshank Redemption and Porky's in terms of essential viewing. Not forgetting your good self, of course. Thank you, Thomas. But it's interesting. If the Shawshank Redemption's on, you always watch it. You don't go, I've seen it. You sit and you watch it. I actually posted that... Um, Anything, um, I, any movie that didn't have Tom Hanks in it wasn't really <laughs> a terrible thing to say, but uh, not from Tom's point of view, because Tom Hanks is just A, such a great guy, and B, such a superb actor. I loved it. So there we go. He, when you see, it's like there's a number of actors, too numerous to mention, wonderful people. And when you see them in something, you've just got to watch it. Michael Caine is another one. Anything with Michael Caine, Tom Hanks, anything with Tom Hanks. I mean, there must be myriad actors that you've got, uh, you know, that you, uh, you, 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 you want to, you want to say, you know, tremendous. Um, I heard that from my Middlesbrough workmate, says Esther. Absolutely, Esther. Rita Haywood, a cupcake. So there you are. Thomas Peden, yes, a cupcake. Seen Shawshank umpteen times. Love it. Margaret Sheldon. It's, um, it is. It's very, very moving, though, as well. And our wee old guy that takes his life. That cracks me. Um... Martin Comston is Scotland's best actor, says Finlay Morris. Right, Finlay? We'll go for that. Scotland has produced so many great actors, and I'm not just talking about myself. <laughs> um, wonderful. I mean, look at David Heyman, you know, I mean, fantastic. All these, there's just so many of them. It's once you start naming them. And the ones that we did have as well, you know, Duncan McRae and Bill Simpson, you know, John Kearney is a wonderful actor. Wonderful John Kearney, Rabbi Burns, and uh, Fulton Mackay, Roddy McMillan, John Grieve, Walter Carr, Tom Fleming, um, you know, Laurie Ventre, um, Bobby Carlyle, you know, all these, oh my goodness, the list is endless, David Heyman, you know, I mean, once you start, your actors. Uh, what about the scene, Gregor Fisher, wonderful actor? What about the scene when the sisters set about Andy in the laundry room? That's grim viewing. Yes, it was Grimmer viewing for the sisters, if I remember right, Thomas. So there we go. Yes, um, silly game, you know, but, uh, but, but there we are. Yes, that's <laughs> the whole thing. It's wonderful stuff. Um, planes, trains, and automobiles. Steve Martin and John Candy, funniest two men on the planet, says Peter Connolly. Wonderful, Peter. Incredible. Guys, I can't believe it, but time's up. We're out of time. How crazy is that? I'll play you the goodbye song. That's what we'll do. There we are. Because poor Karim, we never get round to anything on the organ. So we'll have the goodbye song on the piano. 
How about that? Somebody said you can't always see the organ. Can you see it now? Somebody said to the other day, but we don't know if you're playing that, Scotty. Did you all see that there? Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> and I'll sing you the goodbye song as well so that you know. So there we go. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of it does ain't no revoir and cheerio. There we go, my darlings. Have a fabulous weekend. I'll see you all Sunday night, 8 p.m. Failing that, no excuses now, Monday, 10 a.m. live. God willing, weather permitting. Stay safe, stay home, stay fabulous, stay beautiful. Thanks very much for watching. ta -da -da See you Sunday, Gordon. The party's over.